My name is Professor Chris Alden. I'm one of the directors of LSE Ideas, a foreign policy think tank, uh, exploring and examining new ideas, new thoughts, new, new uh, initiatives uh, from around the globe. We're working today with colleagues uh, and friends at the Policy Center for the New South out of Morocco, out of Rabat. Uh, like ourselves, they're engaged in, in new thinking, new ideas, and examinations of the world uh, uh, from, from a, a, a re research-based perspective. Today, we've collaborating to um, examine the topic of Morocco's new Africa policy and expand, expanding economic links with continental Africa. Um, uh, Morocco's economic ties with the rest of the, of the African continent have been expanding for quite a number of year, years. Um, uh, these, this transformation is one, is one which has largely not been plotted, at least in the Anglophone and, and, and European world, and this is one of the reasons we want to, to examine this idea. Um, according to the Moroccan Ministry of Finance, uh, Morocco's trade with this Africa's partners is, has encouraged around 9.5% every year for the last two decades. What this has meant that is since 2007, a total, a total of 47% of Moroccan FDI has been going abroad. So this is a, an important trend and the African component of it is, is especially interesting, innovative and, and uh, significant. Um, in, uh, today we have uh, two speakers and, and a, um, a discussant, uh, experts in their areas who, who can, can address this or help us address this question. Uh, our first speaker uh, will be uh, Dr. Latifa El Bouad Del Lawi, um, a general director of the Islamic Center of Development and Trade. She was previously the director of international trade relations at the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Green digital tech, uh, economy of the Kingdom of Morocco uh, since uh, from 2013. Um, she's worked on a wide range of trade expertise, including developing trade policies, leading negotiations on trade agreements, implementing commercial and industrial cooperation projects, and worked at also not only at the Ministry of Industry, Trade, Green and Digital uh, Economy in the Kingdom of Morocco. She was a chief negotiator on, on a, a variety of trade related matters. So she will be speaking first. Um, she will be followed by uh, Dr. Larabi Jaid, um, Jaidi, who is the senior fellow on the Policy Center of the New South, who focuses on, on international economy, uh, social development, international relations, and Mediterranean studies. Mr. Jaidi uh, has also been a member of, of Morocco's Special Commission on the Development Model, headed by Morocco's ambassador to France, Shakib Aboumoussa. He's a former professor at Mohamed Sank University in Rabat, Agdal, um, and has expertise on economic policy, international economic relations, and ec the economy of the regions. He is also a founding member of the Center of Moroccan the uh, Marocain de Conjecture and and of the Groupement Études de Recherche sur la Méditerranée. He's a member of the research group of the Euro Mediterranean Universities Network, advisor to the Prime Minister and to the Minister of Economic and Finance, and is an independent expert at the, at the Moroccan Competitive Council and Moroccan Authority for the Fight Against Corruption. He holds a, a, a position on the board of uh, the Abdirim Abouadid um, uh, Foundation and acts as a consultant and of course as, uh, has many publications. And finally, our discussant uh, will be uh, Anna, Dr. Ana Alves, who is um, an assistant professor at the School of Humanities and Social Sciences at Nanyang Technical University in Singapore. She, uh, she's a member of the Institut d'Orient in Lisbon, an associate researcher with the South African Institute of International Affairs. She's part of the advisory board of two journals. Um, uh, one is uh, of, of Portuguese Institute of International Relations and another on Advanced East-West East -West Adva uh, Institute for Advanced Studies in Macau and does work on foreign policy analysis, economic statecraft, South-South cooperation, in particular focusing on China's relations with developing areas and Africa with a, with a special focus. Um, 
and she's also done work on the Portuguese uh, speaking, uh, China's relationship with Portuguese speaking countries, as well as uh, Brazil's and other emerging powers involvement in African relations. So without further ado, if I could ask the first speaker um, to, to uh, give us uh, her view of, of um, this topic, Dr. Boadre. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Chris. I would like uh, in uh, the beginning to thank uh, Policy Center for the New South and the University, London University for inviting me and for organizing this important uh, webinar. Uh, the subject uh, is very interesting and I uh, am going to deal uh, in my presentation with uh, two main uh, uh, point. First one, I will uh, give an overview of uh, uh, Morocco's strategy of, for Africa and uh, the second point will be about the FTA, Continental Free Trade Area, uh, project, uh, a big project of African countries, a historical achievement for African countries and the, the question is how these projects will impact national strategy. Uh, concerning uh, the uh, Morocco's strategy of Africa, I would like to remind uh, that since its independence, Morocco has confirmed its African identity. Bilateral economic and trade cooperation has always been an important tool in Morocco's strategy toward African countries. And since 1916, after a large number of African countries become independent, Morocco has established a significant network of bilateral cooperation agreements with its African partners. These agreements have been significantly and strongly developed dur during the last 20 years under the leadership of His Majesty King Mohammed VI. During this period, His Majesty has given a uh, uh, new impetus to the development of partnership between Morocco and other African countries, uh, notably by, my, by making more visits to various African regions, about uh, 46 visits to 25 countries. I also would like to highlight that Morocco's strategy for Africa is a result of a clear and constant vision of South-South cooperation an integrated approach based in co-development, transfer of know-how, creation of value-added and jobs in all African countries. Regarding Morocco's FDAs in its sub-Saharan neighbors, the inclusive approach take in to link these investments with the economies of the host countries and target sectors where they can boost domestic investment, create a quality jobs and catalyze productive capacity. Moreover, the participation of Morocco expertise in supporting its investment projects will positively impact the know-how and technology transfer to African countries. Uh, since 2000, Morocco has signed nearly 1,000 agreements with African countries in various uh, fields of cooperation. These agreements, take the form of trade agreements, investment promotion and protection agreements, double taxation conventions, and uh, trade and the tariff agreements, as well as industrial agreements that involve the private sector through investments. Uh, Morocco is mainly investing in uh, uh, various uh, sectors, for example, uh, financial services, uh, telecommunication, transportation, industry, agriculture, and energy. And uh, maybe uh, Dr. Jaidi uh, uh, will uh, give us more information and more details uh, about these uh, as aspects. But let me uh, uh, show uh, you some projects that represent the deepness, inclusivity, and sustainability of our strategy in Africa. The first exa example I want to, to share with you is in the field of energy. 
the Africa Atlantic Gas Pipeline Project, developed with Nigeria, Morocco and Nigeria. This project will uh, definitely transform the whole sub-region, the West Africa. This project will allow natural gas to be transported from Nigeria, country of production, to Europe, the uh, market, final market. But mo more than that, this project will contribute to create uh, a market uh, of electricity in the region to be an uh, important source of energy of all countries of uh, West of Africa, to help to develop industry, to improve economic competitiveness, to improve attractivity of investment, and to speed up uh, social uh, uh, developments for all, uh, all the region. Moreover, it will help build a, a, a peaceful bilateral and multilateral relations and thus create an environment uh, for development and for prosperity and growth for all uh, the region, uh, prosperity, prosperity for people. The second uh, example I want to, to give is the projects of uh, fertilizer, fertilizer production uh, that have been, uh, 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 we have at least two projects in Africa that have been set up with both Ethiopia and Nigeria. This project will benefit also all the continent. They aim it at improving agricultural productivity and promoting food security and rural development. The third uh, example I want to, to share with you is about uh, training. To, su to support economic and social development in Africa countries, Morocco developed uh, 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 cooperation and training uh, with the many countries that enable uh, students from this country to continue their higher education in Morocco. And then uh, to improve uh, human resources in uh, African uh, countries. Uh, uh, lastly, I, I want to, to, to highlight th that all these examples of projects confirm that Morocco is the right to develop and implement African strategy. By doing so, Morocco has opted to share development and its experience. In concrete terms, Morocco is contributing to build a prosperous and solidarity-based future uh, for our continent. To conclude this uh, first uh, part of my uh, intervention, uh, uh, within the framework of clear-sighted collaboration, Morocco, which is uh, an, an, a major economic player in Africa, is becoming a catalyst for shared expansion. Morocco is also assuming the right to impose its development model as African country. Uh, uh, I, uh, this, this is uh, the, the, the conclusion of my first, uh, uh, for my first point. The second point is uh, about uh, uh, continental trade area. Uh, this, uh, this area uh, was uh, one of the, the best uh, uh, achievements of African uh, countries last year. But uh, before uh, talking about that, uh, I, I want to uh, share some uh, data information about Africa. Africa has a market of 1.5 billion people. Uh, it has a combined GDP of uh, more than 2.5 trillion American dollars. The fastest growth economy in the world are in Africa. Africa, uh, as we see, is the continent of the future with enormous opportunities for itself, but also for its partners fr from other countries. However, we, we, we regret to see that Africa is the least integrated region on the world. Intra-regional uh, trade was 18% uh, 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 on uh, 2019 while this uh, right is more than 15 for uh, Europe, for Asia, and for America. 
This situation is due to structural challenges that Africa must address. Uh, the, 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 this, uh, some example of these uh, uh, challenges, market fragmentation and smallness of national economies, over-dependence on the exports of raw materials and primary commodities, uh, lack of export specialization, and uh, uh, lack uh, underdeveloped, underdeveloped industry, uh, lack of regional value added, and high tariff and no tariff barriers entre uh, Africa uh, countries. In this regard, the CFTA, the free trade area, is a critical response to Africa's development challenges. In this area, if this area is effectively implemented, it will enable Africa to significantly boost intra-Africa trade improve economies of scale and to establish an integrated market. It will be a catalyst for industrial development, placing Africa on a, on a path to exporting value-added products, improving Africa's competitiveness, both in its own markets and globally. It also sends a strong signal to all the world that Africa is open for business, uh, based on a clear and transparent rule for trade and for investment. If this agreement is effectively implemented by all countries and if uh, all countries and African Union and other uh, uh, regional uh, organizations uh, uh, make the necessary for that, this agreement does not benefit only the big corporation on the African continent and foreign countries, but it should always be inclusive of youth, women, and SMEs. Uh, 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 by developing regional uh, value chains and uh, to connect these value chains to uh, global economy. Uh, for Morocco, uh, this area is perfectly online with our strategy. And uh, Moroccan authorities will uh, make all uh, necessary, uh, all, uh, uh, they, they will do uh, what they, they, they have to do to implement this uh, uh, area uh, as soon as possible, benefit of uh, all enterprises, Moroccan and African, uh, population, women, youth, and and uh, micro, uh, uh, medium, and uh, small uh, companies. This is uh, this is uh, the end of my uh, uh, second point. Uh, I uh, I thank you for your uh, uh, time, and uh, I'm uh, here uh, to ask if you have any uh, qu uh, question. I will happy to to answer them. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. That was great. That gave us a fantastic introduction to, to the topic and, and to the themes. What, what, what I thought we would do is go through each of, this, of the presentations and then we'll have, uh, we'll have Q&A at the end. So the audience will, we've already got a few questions coming in, so we will pick it up from there. Now, if I could turn to, to our next speaker, Dr. Jaidi, if you would uh, take the floor, please. Thank you. I think you're muted still, actually. Good evening, everyone, and thank you, uh, Mr. Chris Alden. I, uh, I will, uh, my contribution uh, to this uh, panel is uh, to present uh, four points for the discussion. Um, first, uh, the first question, or the first point is about uh, trade relation between uh, Morocco and Africa in the last 20 years. Uh, the evolution of this uh, uh, trade and uh, what we can uh, take um, some, some conclusion about uh, the tendencies. The second point is uh, how can we evaluate the presence of uh, Moroccan uh, companies in Africa. 
what are their strategy and uh, what are their impact in the development of uh, the relation between Morocco and Africa. The third point is uh, a question, can we uh, really consider that uh, Moroccan banks played an important role in uh, consolidating uh, this presence of uh, the Moroccan companies in the continent. And the fourth point is another question. Can Morocco, uh, under its, in, uh, its uh, recent experience, be uh, considered as uh, a gateway to business in Africa and uh, to promote uh, triangular relations. And I will uh, conclude my, my, my intervention with, uh, by, by some conclusive points on uh, the requirements to consolidate Morocco's economic position in Africa. So for the first point about uh, trade relations, the main idea is I think that uh, these trade relations are under the, their potential. Between uh, the beginning of uh, the century and the 2020, Morocco's trade exchange with the uh, African uh, Sub-Saharan sub countries improved significantly. But uh, this uh, trade exchange with the African partners of Morocco uh, are now in surplus, but uh, despite the progress, bilateral trade between Morocco and uh, other African countries is still below average given its potential, I, I mean, and given uh, also exhausti, uh, uh, existing business opportunity. Morocco's bilateral exchange intensity with uh, its African partners uh, reproduces the same, uh, character, the same setup characterizing South-South exchange. I mean that uh, it is a concentrated trade on some countries or on uh, some products. And uh, important opportunities to export to this region exist. Uh, the weakness in trade activity is due uh, to problems of adjustment of uh, the national productive apparatus to the specificities of the African market. And uh, Moroccan enterprises should privilege a penetration strategy based on cost leadership that could give uh, access to mass production or uh, low or medium quality. So it is, I think, necessary to clear the structural constraints, institutional, political, and logistical constraints that hinder the expansion of trade with these countries, so we can enlarge Morocco's exchange map and diversify the source of growth of uh, uh, trade relation with the uh, African countries. I agree that uh, the African free trade area give uh, an opportunity or a potential to develop uh, the volume and uh, to diversify uh, relation between Morocco and uh, other countries of Africa. Uh, but uh, the African free trade uh, area has been adopted by it, but it uh, requires the government to take action. I mean that uh, Morocco until today had not yet endorsed the deal by uh, ratification of the treaty. And uh, 
There is no a huge challenge to get it through parliament, but uh, we are in, in a situation where the deal is not really endorsed. Because there is uh, also uh, some uh, factors hindering exchange between Morocco and the other countries of Africa. Uh, protection, non-tariff measures, such as, such, uh, as uh, certificates of import, quality controls uh, that uh, sometimes imposed on importation in uh, a discriminatory manner. We have also the multiplicity of fiscal regimes in the countries of the region. Uh, and the situation increased the cost of uh, foreign exchange transactions. We have also some uh, structural problems related to transport infrastructure uh, and uh, the information deficit on, uh, on the op business opportunities in this country. The second point about uh, if the I Moroccan, I Moroccan direct investment in the continent, uh, we observe that uh, in a cumulative value, uh, we have uh, developed our capacity to invest in, 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 the, in the continent. And the Moroccan companies are present in actually in more than 44 African countries. Uh, these flows are uh, addressed mainly to, to West Africa countries with an average uh, of 50-15%, followed by North Africa and Central Africa, 25 and uh, 50 uh, percent. And Southern Africa is very small part of this contribution of the I, of FDI in Morocco in, in Africa, about uh, 5 percent. Uh, this uh, relation started with uh, exports, imports in trade approach in the beginning. And with uh, the countries close to at the geographical and cultural levels, Maghreb, West Africa, South Africa in the beginning. But these relations been uh, consolidated over the years by adopting uh, a pragmatic and a progressive approach. Uh, and Morocco uh, uh, opened up to new uh, regions in the continent, on the, uh, of the continent, on the occasion of uh, the royal tours, are, and in particular in East Africa and Southern Africa. So, investments were launched in uh, many sectors of uh, industry, health services, telecommunication and digital, uh, financial services, construction industry, uh, and construction industry have the grown in, uh, in importance and uh, were followed, followed now by agricultural and agricultural food uh, sectors, etc. So uh, Morocco is uh, much prized in Africa. Uh, the country's investment in sub-Saharan uh, Africa is still timid now. Uh, what about the presence of Moroccan companies in Africa? Uh, recently, we have uh, uh, learned some uh, interest, interesting uh, observation uh, in, um, in a survey conducted by uh, French Development Agency IFD and the Department of Economic Studies and Financial Forecast uh, of the Moroccan Ministry of Economy and Finance. And this survey concluded that expansion in Africa is often the result of opportunities that uh, Moroccan companies have seized. From uh, sporadic to expanded relation. Uh, various factors underlie the development of Moroccan companies in Africa. Uh, the growth of uh, in the economy in uh, many countries of Africa. It is a source of opportunities. 
growth of middle classes, access to raw materials and so on. And the market potential and accessibility as well as political stability are the main criteria for selecting, selecting the targeted countries by, by the companies. And the establishment of uh, um, Moroccan companies in, in Africa follows uh, an incremental approach, export and project contracts at the first stage. Uh, and after we develop business alliances and partnership as act of accelerated uh, growth. So expansion in Africa involves specific risk, as you say, risks that are managed through uh, preventive measure, risk covered through the Moroccan export insurance corporation. Uh, about uh, the third point of Morocco banks, um, we know that uh, Moroccan banks is a vast network, has a vast network in African continent. Uh, we know that Moroccan uh, banking sector is relatively large, well-developed uh, and remain sound overall. Uh, and banks, Moroccan banks have built a vast network on African continent in recent year. Uh, the international activity of the three largest banks of Morocco is estimated about one fifth, one -fifth of the total consolidated assets, it is important. And uh, the three pan-African Moroccan banks have uh, systematic presence in several uh, countries, African countries. And these three largest Moroccan banks expanded rapidly in, uh, in these countries, mainly by uh, acquiring previously existing banking group, French banking group. Morocco have, uh, has benefited also from uh, a privileged geostrategic position at the crossroads of Europe, Africa, and the Arab world, and from its uh, resilience to economic slowdowns during uh, the global financial crisis. So the financial expansion of the Moroccan banks went in uh, parallel with increasing trade flows and uh, the expansion of Moroccan companies in uh, Africa. Uh, the activity of Morocco's, Morocco's banks outside the, the kingdom's border is generally decelerating uh, according to the recent report of uh, the Moroccan Central Bank. This is due to slowdown in some countries and in international regulations that modify the evaluation of uh, financial results. And the three Moroccan groups focused on uh, strengthening equity capital to better manage risks, particular in a handful of African countries. The growth in deposits collected by, by this bank also slowed down and uh, no performing loans carried by foreign subsidiaries uh, uh, amount to, to, uh, to 15 billion uh, dirham. Uh, the Moroccan bank, Central Bank has played a major role guiding and uh, supervising the expansion and aiming to make Morocco and the international financial hub will uh, ensuring appropriate risk control. Uh, and I think that uh, bilateral memoranda of understanding have been signed with most of the host countries in Moroccan in which Moroccan banks are present. The last question is, uh, can Morocco be a gateway to business in Africa? Uh, Africa's rich endowment of natural resources, you know. Morocco provides a potential solution to, uh, to face the, um, the risk in, this, in, this, in, in, this, in the continent because uh, uh, Morocco is a bastion of stability on the doorstep of an often turbulent continent, and it is also a rising economic power. And its economic and commercial links across the continent uh, and contribution to regional 
political stability and security make it uh, especially attractive portal for investment and a significant partner of Africa. Uh, I think that Morocco is geographically well suited to serve as portal to Africa. Uh, he played an important role in preparing the ground for the country's re-engagement with Africa. And uh, due to its proximity to Europe, to Middle East and the Sub-Saharan Africa, I think that uh, Moroccan society is also a coffin of uh, those cultures. And uh, he has a unique uh, situation. So I think that uh, the question of infrastructure modernization was now the main objective of uh, the development of Africa see the new partnership for Africa's development uh, and regarded as uh, an essential vector for economic growth, infrastructure development is a prerequisite to close the existing gap between sub-Saharan Africa and emerging countries. In uh, the face of insufficient aid, I think that uh, private foreign investment is necessary. Uh, and in this regard, Morocco uh, could play an important role in triangular cooperation designed to canal international aid to finance uh, infrastructure projects in, in Africa. Uh, I think it is uh, possible. So for the conclusion, um, what are the requirements to consolidate uh, Morocco's economic position in Africa and uh, its uh, potential role as a gateway? I think that Morocco can play a prominent role in terms of uh, technical, cultural assistance and share its uh, expertise in various domains. So it is essential to consolidate institutional dialogue private enterprise partnership, bilateral institution corporation, technical exchange between uh, vocational training, organization and public enterprises, to consolidate also cooperation in the field of uh, uh, education and uh, uh, development research and vocational training. Uh, it is also vital to consolidate cooperation ties between uh, uh, chambers of commerce and uh, both parties to revive non-governmental trade uh, diplomacy. Thank you for, uh, for your passion. Thank you so much. That gave us a, 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 a wonderfully detailed uh, understanding of, of Moroccan policy towards Africa, the areas, the economic areas of uh, where, where growth has occurred and, and some of the key questions too. Thanks very much. May I uh, turn to Dr. Alves for discussing? Thank you. Hi, good evening. Uh, good evening from Singapore. <laughs> I suppose the majority of you are in the other side of the planet. It's either good morning or good afternoon. Uh, I would like to thank the, the two presenters for the very insightful uh, views into uh, the topic we're discussing here today. I must say um, it's a topic that um, I'm, I'm not a special, I've, uh, like most of the audience, I guess, uh, I, I've read about it, I have uh, an interest on in it, but I'm, I, I, I do not consider myself to be a, a specialist. Uh, but I've been observing um, for a long time um, uh, our uh, Afri African development issues and particularly how um, other players can play a, uh, intervene, engage with the continent in, in terms of um, uh, development, helping African country, countries provide to their own development. And it's with um, great interest that I see that Morocco is now willing, uh, another African country that uh, is willing to actually play uh, a leading role in this regard and not leave it to the outside players. Uh, so I will start with uh, Latifa's presentation. Um, so Latifa's uh, uh, presentation gave us sort of a, an overview um, of Morocco's strategy for Africa and sort of uh, what have been the achievements so far, what are the intentions behind it, the, mot the motivations and sort of a roadmap to achieve that. Uh, so 
I find it particularly in, insightful, the, the, sort of the, the background uh, and in, in terms of the, uh, Morocco's evolution in, in, in terms of the partnerships with uh, the African, other African countries, the variety of, of agreements, and especially the fact that those three areas which uh, Latifa highlighted, um, which were unknown to me, where uh, they have procured special agreements or uh, special cooperation projects or pursued special cooperation projects with some countries, namely in uh, the energy uh, sector with Nigeria for hoping to create um, uh, an energy market in the region, which, uh, which makes total sense to me. And it's a, a very important, uh, a very important, important uh, goal, I believe, for that region. Also, in, in terms of the, the fertilizer production, um, the cooperation that's established with Ethiopia, Nigeria, and also uh, the role that this, particularly because the role that this can play in providing for Africa's own security, uh, food security. And last but not least, also an area that which is very important for Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, the training, training especially for, for young people and uh, the, the role that Morocco is trying to perform in this regard by attracting um, Sub-Saharan African students to its uh, universities. Uh, I have a, a few questions just to kickstart the debate in, in um, with regards to your to your presentation. Just uh, maybe not so much questions, but uh, sort of uh, hints to perhaps uh, detail a bit more some of your points. And um, I would like to start with the one on the, the training of African students. I I'd like to hear a bit more about what uh, planning, what, what strategizing has gone into this from the part of the governments, if you are aware of it. I know, I, I suppose this is not your particular area of interest. You're more into trade, but just curious to, to see what, if there are any particular strategies or, or, or plans that are being uh, rolled out or still in planning for this regard and how they're going to attract, if they're going to give scholarships, uh, what is the, the, the strategy behind, behind this. Uh, also, you mentioned at some point technology transfer, that this is one of the sectors that, that Morocco uh, hopes to play a big role. And I was just a little uh, curious as to what sectors in particular is Morocco interested in playing um, uh, any, uh, a role in technology transfer that could be useful for, for um, other, for sub-Saharan African countries. Um, and also one, one other thing that you mentioned that I'm really, really interested in because that, that touches more of my um, interest, my research interest is about the, the Moroccan development model. It, you, you mentioned that Morocco is also um, behind all this is also uh, an attempt to disseminate the Moroccan industrialization mo model, which obviously is working uh, very well uh, for, uh, for the country. I, I just wanted to, to know if you, if you can expand a bit more about what is this uh, Moroccan development model? Uh, what are uh, what is the matrix? What are the main um, lessons, if you will, that, that can be extracted from here and potentially be uh, transferred or transplanted uh, or adjusted to other um, uh, contexts in the in the um, in the sub-Saharan region? Okay, so I'll leave it there as the questions for Latifa, um, and I'll move on to um, uh, Larabi Jaidi now which I also for, uh, thought it was a very, very interesting uh, uh, presentation as well, um, uh, focusing on four main points on how trade uh, has evolved uh, with, the, with the region, uh, what's, what's the major trends, um, then sort of giving us a, a, an overview also of uh, the presence of Moroccan companies in Africa, uh, the, the various strategies and how far they've gone, uh, the role of the banks in, in consolidating uh, that strategy, which I, I found was something um, uh, uh, very, uh, very interesting that I can see, for instance, in other players such as, as China, uh, also uh, the Chinese policy banks particularly playing a big role in supporting uh, financially 
uh, the, their companies um, in, in entering the African uh, markets. And um, last but not least, the, the point that you made on um, situating uh, or how that geographic, that, that uh, particular geographic uh, positioning of, of Morocco can work well uh, for, for it to become a gateway into Africa and promote uh, triangular uh, relations. That was, uh, I think, a very important point uh, there. In terms of, of the questions, um, I have three main questions to start uh, with. Um, first one, um, with, with regards to the, the companies, uh, uh, that you, you mentioned that are pretty much spread all over the continent, even though more concentrated in uh, the Western area and, and less with a, a, a minimal presence in, in Southern uh, Africa. I, I was curious to find out more a little, a little more about what are the major obstacles? Why are the reason why there is so little presence in uh, that part of, of Sub-Saharan Africa, in the, in the southern uh, region? This is also something I, I, I live in, in South Africa in, in the past and I visited Morocco at some point while I was there. And I, uh, it was a bit of a, a mission to, to get from Johannesburg to Rabat because there was no di direct flights. So I suppose that that will be one of the one of the issues. But I, I would like to hear more a little more about why why is is this uh, reason why is is there more is there so little presence of Morocco in um, the southern part of the continent and whether there are any strategies any thinking around this to change that that situation or if not there's no plans there are no strategies what do you think could help. Uh, promote the presence of, of Moroccan companies in, uh, in that region. Also, um, while you were talking about the, 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 the banks and their role um, in, in promoting the, the business and expanding the Moroccan interests in the region, I was also thinking about what more can the government um, in Morocco do um, to promote, to support uh, the expansion of, of its companies, be it private companies or, or state companies, uh, to, to overcome some of, of the limitations uh, that you mentioned in the African market, in terms of cost transactions, in terms of the exchange rates all, and all that. Um, because I'm, I'm raising that question because I, I know as well, for instance, China has tried one way, in addition to the banks providing financial support, one way uh, China has, has been trying to reduce those cost transactions is by uh, signing with some of these countries um, uh, agreements for direct transactions, for not using the dollar, but transact directly in, in, in yuan. So that's, uh, I don't know if this is something that is uh, in planning or has, um, uh, has been raised already, but I would like to hear a little bit more if you are aware of it or if you have any thoughts on this. What, what could the government do to support the companies um, to overcome these structural limitations of, of the African uh, market? And the last question regarding the infrastructure, I thought you made a very interesting point, a very important point about uh, how Morocco could potentially play uh, uh, an important role in triangulating uh, all the interests um, that converge now on, on the continent. And particularly with regards to, to hard infrastructure provision to overcome one of the main structural deficiencies, which is transport infrastructure connecting um, the, the continent in order to promote intra-regional trade. Does Morocco has any uh, strategies on how to engage prominent players in that field like China. For instance, China has become in uh, over the past two decades a major player in the infrastructure sector in, in Morocco. And I've seen also that um, when comparing the presence of Chinese engagement in infrastructure, it's much more visible in sub-Saharan Africa than it is in Northern African uh, countries. 
Uh, and I would just like to know a little bit more about if you have done any thoughts around how China, how, how Morocco could sort of tap into this uh, market where China is already a big presence, whether it can play that triangulating uh, role or if uh, the competition is too far gone at this stage. Okay, and I'll end it there, I'll leave it there. Um, and I'll have a few more questions if uh, I have an, an opportunity, but I think first we go, we're gonna go to the audience. And I, I believe Chris has also uh, one or two questions that he would like to uh, raise. Thank you and over to you. Thank you, w wonderful. I think that that um, be, uh, wonderful set of uh, questions to, to uh, the presenters and, and I think in, let, let's give the presenters the right of response <laughs> and we will start with uh, Latifa and, and then once she's done to Larabi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Anna, for your uh, questions. Uh, um, uh, concerning the first question uh, about uh, training, uh, uh, you asked me how uh, Morocco uh, ensure uh, 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 cooperation uh, on training between African uh, with African countries. Uh, uh, this this is a strategic uh, choice for Morocco uh, for uh, uh, and a uh, uh, very important act in its strategy for Africa. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, this uh, cooperation uh, uh, is, is uh, setting up uh, through uh, bilateral agreements between Morocco and other uh, uh, African countries, and uh, uh, Morocco uh, uh, offer uh, every year thousands of scholarships to African students, and. Uh, public, uh, especially public universities and uh, uh, schools and institutes in Morocco uh, receive every uh, year uh, uh, a hundred of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of African students, uh, about uh, 12,000 uh, every year of, uh, uh, for only for public universities, public uh, uh, universities. Uh, and there is also some private uh, uh, universities and the schools that uh, also offer a, a possibility to African students uh, to, to make uh, their uh, high, uh, uh, high uh, degree in, uh, in Morocco. Uh, the second, uh, the second uh, question you ask me is about uh, about transfer of uh, of technology and uh, now uh, how to uh, African uh, uh, people. Uh, uh, this is uh, the results of our approach, our uh, inclusive approach uh, based on solidarity and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, cooperation between uh, Moroccan and, uh, and uh, African. Uh, and as I said uh, in my presentation, uh, Moroccan companies, when they invest in uh, Africa, they, uh, they, uh, they ensure that uh, sectors in which they invest are uh, 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 sectors are uh, 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 are important for host country, and they ensure also that these investments create quality jobs and create value added in the host country. And by this process, this inclusivity, they ensure transfer of know how and. Uh, 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 transfer of technology in uh, sectors uh, on which they invest uh, finance, uh, telecommunication, uh, uh, some sector of in industry also. The last uh, question you asked me is about uh, Morocco model for Africa. Uh, 
Morocco model is what I, I, I present in, my, in, the, in the beginning, uh, a strategy based in cooperation, based in inclusivity, based in sustainability of uh, the cooperation, uh, based on sectors that are sense for African countries, creation on value added in these African countries, share of prosperity, share of uh, 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 benefits, share of experiences. This is, uh, uh, this is what I mean by uh, uh, Morocco model. This is only one part of Morocco model of development. I, I, I think that uh, Mr. Uh, Jaidi uh, is uh, uh, more qualified uh, to talk about that. He was in the, 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 the commission of uh, uh, Morocco, Morocco model of development. And in this Morocco model, there is uh, Africa is, uh, is, uh, uh, is present. And uh, I, I believe that uh, uh, the component of Africa model of uh, Africa Morocco uh, uh, Morocco model of development uh, is uh, inclusivity, sustainability, uh, prosperity for all, uh, share of experience, share of development, value added uh, insight of Africa, uh, uh, creation of, of value added, but value added that can be linked to global value added. This is, uh, in my view, uh, uh, African uh, Morocco uh, model for Africa. Thank you very much. I think uh, very comprehensive response. And now, if, if uh, Laura B. Yes, uh, thank you for uh, your, your question. Uh, for the first one about, uh, about the presence of the Moroccan companies in Africa, and uh, what are the reasons that uh, they had a preference for, uh, for the proximity and then uh, to look for uh, uh, the implantation in, uh, in, uh, in uh, east of Africa or south of Africa. I think that it is an heritage of the past. You know that uh, Morocco have, has also uh, always commercial relation with, uh, with uh, Senegal, Mali, uh, uh, Ivory Coast, uh, uh, the, the French uh, area uh, uh, of, of Africa in West Africa. And um, these traditional relations has created what we name in, uh, in French as uh, a zone of comfort. In zone de confort. In zone de confort, I think that it means in English, uh, it is comfortable to, to go uh, in, the, in the areas where we have uh, uh, traditional relations, sometimes cultural relations uh, for a long history. But um, when we, uh, we look now of, of uh, the possibility to develop. I think that uh, the Royal Tours in, uh, in 20, 2010 of uh, 2010 uh, uh, years has opened the possibility to, uh, to, to be a part of the dynamic of Africa as a continent. And uh, it is very, very, very hard to, uh, for the companies to, uh, to be implanted in, this, uh, in these countries because uh, there, is, uh, there is no, uh, no experience. It is another culture, Anglo-Saxon or uh, Lusitanian culture. Is it, uh, it is uh, also, uh, uh, a problem to access to these countries. Yeah, the, the infrastructural problem is, is most important. It must more important, more important than than in comparison with the, with the Senegal or Mali uh, 
and, uh, and uh, the countries in, in the proximity. And you have uh, the risk is uh, very high in these countries. Uh, political risk, administrative risk, and uh, I think that secu security and uh, political risk persist in uh, many of, uh, of these countries in Central Africa and uh, in some countries of the, in the core of Africa. Mm -hmm. Uh, several companies of uh, the Moroccan companies um, where the, uh, where, when they, they are interviewed about uh, why they, they, they can take the, these opportunities for the large market in, the, in this, these countries, the highlights that the security risk for human resources and facilities. It's the first point. And they, they, they say that the risk is very high and uh, it, uh, it may be a reason for uh, sometimes kitting a project. And uh, uh, among the measures put in place by, 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 by the, the Moroccan state to manage this risk, we can mention uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the agreement with, uh, with the countries, uh, the agreement to secure transaction, to secure uh, investment in these countries. And, uh, uh, but companies, um, I, th I think that we have two or three examples in, in Nigeria that uh, security is concerned had uh, obliged some some uh, some enterprise to uh, to to leave the, 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 the project and the, the, the second reason i think notably in corner uh, corn africa sudan uh, somalia and so on the risk of uh, kenya also the risk of political instability is uh, also present huh? So uh, in the, the sector with the main sponsor are uh, the public authorities. You can, you can uh, have uh, uh, some investment because uh, it is uh, based on cooperation, but for uh, and, uh, private enterprise, uh, notably in, uh, in the, constru on the construction sector, uh, which is uh, very sensitive to, to, this, to this risk. And there is evidence that uh, the project in, in some, some of this country is very, very, very risky. Uh, you have also uh, in uh, these countries uh, administrative risks. I mean that uh, delay to delays uh, uh, in administrative pro procedures. Uh, legal and, and tax difficulty to implement uh, the announced tax provisions uh, uh, and so on. So several risks uh, can, can be co considered as, uh, as constraints to, to, uh, to have an opportunity in these uh, in the, in this countries. Who, but um, when, when it is a public uh, enterprise like OCP in phosphate or fertilizers. Uh, we, 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 we know that uh, we have many structural projects to big projects in fertilizers in Ethiopia and uh, maybe in Kenya in the future, uh, in Rwanda and uh, so, so on. The, also, I think that uh, uh, we, we, the, the, the legal support to cover the risk of private companies in Morocco is not very, 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 very developed. We have a, a, corp, uh, a public corporate that uh, cover some uh, assurance risk, uh, assurance for, for the risk. But uh, it, it doesn't work uh, very, very well in the perception of the companies 
uh, there is uh, enough citizen to cover uh, risk coverture in, uh, in, in, in this country. How Morocco can play a triangular uh, role? Uh, the example of China is, uh, is, uh, is a big example. Uh, but uh, in Morocco, I think that we have an experience in many, many, many sectors of infrastructure. Electrification, uh, irrigation and water, uh, construction of road, uh, uh, and so on. But uh, I think that uh, the, the big problem is uh, how to finance, finance this, this project and how to have a link between uh, the contribution of uh, uh, aid or uh, uh, European or international bank and uh, to, uh, to mobilize the assistant, technical assistant, and uh, human resource assistant, uh, which, which is very, very, very high in, in Morocco. And uh, we have an experience in those. So the, 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 the comparison with China uh, is not the same because China can mobilize all the, uh, all the, all the canals, financial canal, resource canal, uh, political canals to be uh, to be uh, in the negotiation to state to state, be, but uh, for Morocco it is a second player, uh, and he wants to uh, to offer its uh, uh, public assistance to public uh, experience, but he wants also to be accompanied by uh, private and local enterprise and uh, financial aid or. Uh, Canal uh, by uh, um, by the international bank or uh, the international aid. Thank you very much. I think that covered the the, the answers. Thanks to both of the presenters for taking on and the questions that, that Anna has put forward. Some of the I had a question about risk, but I think you've covered it pretty adequately. Um, Maybe maybe I can just amend, add a, a point on that, which is um, a sort of question about first movers. By that, I mean companies that are the first actors who go into a, a, an un, a relatively unknown, maybe a country outside of the comfort zone, as you call it. <laughs> um, and I, I wonder, has it, uh, is, are, are these companies encouraged by the state? Is it usually state-owned comp state companies that do it, or is it more private entrepreneurs who are the risk takers that, in, the, in your experience or your knowledge? We, we have the two, the two uh, figures. Huh? We have some companies that uh, are uh, um, accompanied by, by uh, the public uh, institution, uh, I mean, assurance for bank yeah, and so on, mm -hmm. uh, and credit for, for the state for uh, some operation of for some project. But we have uh, uh, very, the, the startup or uh, the little uh, enterprise, small and the middle enterprise that uh, are in uh, research of uh, a risk uh, covered, uh, covered of the risk but uh, which is very, very well managed and uh, anticipate the risk and maybe uh, the, um, uh, they have a relationship in, in the countries. Uh, we they create some alliance. Uh, they go in uh, to, uh, to joint venture uh, operation with uh, with the other uh, private companies, local companies in uh, in, in 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 the countries. Uh, yes, that makes sense to mitigate risk and and sort of take advantage of networks and all of that. Yeah, thank you. I see we have a number of questions, so I will start with the first one. Um, th so I think this is to the group as a whole um, uh, from Eshwar Kara, Morocco's fiscal commitments to the world continuously increase, but with the arrival of the pandemic, 
Will Morocco be able to keep up with these commitments? Because according to the World Bank, the, de the deficit, due to, I suppose the deficit in Morocco is due to the pandemic has reached 7.8 of GDP in 2020. So is, what is the impact of the pandemic on its commitments to, to, uh, I, uh, to the world? But I think we're, we're focused especially on the African side of this. Um, I will, uh, let me see, perhaps I will ask Latifa first, since you were the first speaker, and then pass it on from there to, to, to Arabi. Uh, uh, the, I, I think that uh, Morocco was impacted by the pandemic, uh, as uh, uh, all uh, countries uh, in, the, in the world. Uh, uh, Morocco fiscal commitment to the world continues to increase, but uh, yes, I, I, and I think that uh, the, our uh, uh, fiscal commitment uh, uh, does not be uh, continue to increase uh, even uh, even uh, even uh, uh, the impact of the the, the uh, Crisis, but I, I think that Mr. Jaidi uh, has more uh, information about that uh, and about uh, the report of World Bank. I uh, propose to uh, ask to second question if uh, you agree, uh, Chris. About. Uh, Go ahead, sorry. Uh, about uh, uh, if there is uh, any conflict uh, between uh, uh, Africa Free Trade uh, Agreement and ECOWAS for Morocco. Go ahead. Uh, I, I think that, uh, in my view, there is no conflict. There is any disposition in uh, FCFTA that uh, uh, and that. Uh, uh, not allowed uh, Morocco to have a uh, regional agreement. Uh, I think that uh, the project uh, to have uh, uh, an agreement to, with ECOWAS and uh, to enter this regional area is uh, still uh, on the table. Uh, I, 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 but what we observe uh, uh, effectively is that uh, integration uh, of Morocco with ECOWAS continue and uh, is uh, reinforced uh, more and more. And uh, the project uh, that I, uh, uh, that I, uh, 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 I talk about uh, in the, the beginning of my presentation uh, uh, show that uh, integration uh, to ECOWAS is uh, also a strategic uh, shows of Morocco and uh, it will uh, continue in the future. But uh, in the side of legal, uh, if, uh, if legal uh, uh, aspect uh, agreement, I, I, I think uh, we have uh, to wait and uh, ask uh, to uh, Moroccan authorities uh, about that. The legal agenda, uh, we have to, 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 to check with uh, Moroccan authorities in charge of uh, negotiations. Thank you. Did, um, uh... Rabi, do you want to add further comments or address the first and, and, and the, anything on the second question as well? Yes, I think that uh, the pandemic crisis has uh, uh, demonstrated that uh, Morocco has a capacity to have a capacity to, to, to manage this crisis uh, with the uh, Efficacy. I mean that uh, uh, actually, I think that uh, Morocco is the um, among the first uh, nations in the world that uh, vaccines uh, or, or the effective of population vaccine uh, is uh, is very large. I think about uh, thirty percent of uh, uh, all the population. And uh, 
it is not uh, significant that uh, we are out of the crisis because the uncertainty is always present. Uh, and the pandemic is, uh, is a very trouble situation now uh, with uh, the new variant and, and so on. But uh, besides this uh, um, the management of uh, the if efficiency management of this crisis, uh, I think that uh, Morocco has also taken in account the necessity to reinforce solidarity, national solidarity by uh, providing aids to vulnerable population and uh, by providing uh, aids to enterprise to, uh, to assure the transition between uh, the situation of uh, pandemic and uh, uh, the issue of the crisis. Uh, and I think that uh, even if uh, the deficit of uh, finance public is around uh, now uh, uh, eight and nine percent, and uh, the deficit of uh, GDP for uh, 2020 is about uh, six percent. Um, I think that uh, the Moroccan authority or the Moroccan state has uh, uh, a new plan to react fast, uh, fast uh, in fast of uh, this uh, this uh, this crisis, and. Uh, our ambition, well, the mission of, uh, of the country is to link between uh, uh, the solution of uh, the urgency now and to uh, develop a vision for the, for, the, for, the, for the future, in the future, the medium future, I, uh, I know. So it is the responsibility of uh, the commission to propose to the king uh, some orientation for a new model of development based on a uh, new strategy, based, based on uh, the finality to serve the, 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 the Moroccan citizen and to reinforce the, the initiative of the enterprise to, uh, to, uh, to react to the, to the obstacle, the administrative obstacle by the digital revolution and so on. And to uh, essentially to mobilize uh, the young generation on the dynamic to, uh, to, uh, to the contribution of, uh, to enlarge the, uh, the basic or the assets of uh, of creation of growth. Um, so uh, uh, this mobilization of uh, Morocco's enterprise, Morocco's talents, who should be empowerment and uh, whose capacities need to be uh, uh, strengthened in, uh, in education and in health in order to be, uh, to tackle um, the country's development challenges. And uh, notably that when we know that, that we are in, uh, in a world of uh, increasing complexity, increasing complexity and increasing uncertainty. Uh, and um, I, I, we, we have proposed to, uh, to, uh, to uh, the king and to uh, all the political parties to uh, debate uh, on uh, these uh, new strategies, uh, uh, which the finality is uh, really to, to have a vision of medium, uh, uh, medium term. Why? Because Morocco in the past, in the recent past, has always some strategic, sectorial strategic plan in agriculture, in industry, in uh, numeric, in uh, and so on, in social uh, protection and so on, but uh, we lack for uh, a, a global vision, a global vision uh, with coordination of the choice, with uh, priorities uh, to be clear uh, for all the, the, the parties for the, the enterprise and to um, 
que consolidar de, de loyal competition in, in the economy between the enterprise uh, and to, to leave the, uh, the situation of rent uh, we, that, is, uh, that are uh, present in, in some sectors. Huh? We, uh, it is uh, the real, uh, disons, main idea uh, of, the, of, of this model is uh, to liberalize energy mm -hmm. and to have a vision for the future. Uh, and uh, Africa uh, was a continent that is, uh, that the potential is, is very large and very big. And uh, we have some proposition uh, to reinforce the, the strategy to be a partner of Africa and not to look at Africa as only a market, as only an opportunity. It is an opportunity for Morocco to consolidate its economy by a real partnership between uh, 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 in alliance with, uh, with some countries and to be open, and Africa to be open on the world uh, and to negotiate uh, uh, a better position in the, in the new uh, international relations uh, and become uh, a really an actor as, uh, as it can be. Thank, thank you. I know that some of that was speaking to some of the concerns that Anna had. Did you have a, any follow-up comments you wanted to make? You don't have to, but I just wanted to give you that opportunity. Okay, great. We have only a little bit of time, so I'm going to, we've got last, two last questions that were posted. I'm going to, or a collection of questions, I'm going to summarize them, and if we can be relatively brief, that would be great. One of them is uh, about uh, Morocco's fast-growing economy, the degree to which conflict in the Western Sahara is a part of that, uh, uh, has a relationship to that rather. Um, and then does, how does Morocco relate, relate it to also other fast-growing growing African countries, how, like Ghana and Gabon, how does Morocco plan to reach out or engage with them? Uh, a second uh, uh, speaker or rather questioner asked this, whether Morocco's own economic challenges, domestic politics, and current state of relations with Europe um, uh, is, is its economic policy toward given, I suppose, given Morocco's own economic challenges, domestic politics, and, and current state of relations with Europe, is Morocco's economic forum policy towards Africa viable? Can we talk about uh, materializing a commitment to South-South cooperation. So, I th so if if I'm distributing the questions <laughs> to the to the presenters, and so if you you can step in as you see fit, uh, perhaps in this case let's let's let uh, La Rabi start, and then to, uh, La Latifa can can follow on that point. Okay, I uh, I think that <clears throat> we, we have to develop our our bilateral relation in in, in Africa. We have uh, uh, this project of uh, uh, African free trade, but uh, it's not contradictory between uh, with uh, with uh, developing uh, bilateral relations and uh, with Gabon. I think that we have uh, uh, a long relations. Uh, uh, with, with, with this country um, relationship, uh, partnership uh, in, in trade and in investment. Uh, and for Ghana, um, I think uh, that uh, well, I don't remember the, the date really, but uh, for in, in, in the last decade, uh, the relation with Ghana has uh, in, uh, in, 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 very, in, in in new in new road, uh, a new perspective, because uh, in the past uh, Ghana is uh, it is uh, 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 anglophone uh, country and we have uh, not a relation very cultural relation and very very deep relation with with Ghana, uh, but in the last decade. Uh, and and uh, Ghana 
the rela political relation with Ghana uh, in the in the last past uh, yeah, wasn't very 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 strong because uh, the position of Ghana on uh, on on uh, the Sahara question and so but uh, but uh, in the last decade I think that there is a real uh, um, turn turn. Uh, to not come in, uh, as we said in, in French, in a new, new road. And uh, the relation, the commercial relation is, uh, is in development. We have some projects in uh, uh, construction, in housing, and in mining, I think, some uh, Moroccan enterprise are present in, in now in, 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 in Ghana. But yet, there is a, a great potential and, and the cup and the, and the the possibility to to reinforce this relation uh, are are very very high, I think, in the future. For uh, the relation with Europe, uh, you know that Europe now is uh, uh, present a new 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 uh, a new strategy to uh, to uh, to uh, to Mediterranean countries and to African countries for uh, uh, a new partnership. Um, this new partnership is based on uh, uh, the new strategy of Europe, uh, uh, based on uh, digital, uh, on, uh, on uh, development of uh, new energy, uh, renewed energy and, uh, and the development of uh, uh, what we we know it, uh, um, I, I don't remember the term exactly. The, it, it is a new new fr framework for uh, a really um, develop a new partnership, uh, not just only the question of the security of the relation, migration and stability and so on, but in real. Uh, 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 capacity to to create a, a, a value chain on agriculture, on energy, on services between Africa and Europe, uh, and this, it is a new challenge. But the question is that uh, Europe has until now uh, three framework in uh, in in its vision to cooperation with Africa. Uh, the first one is with uh, uh, the, the South Mediterranean countries. Uh, um, the second is uh, is uh, the new uh, uh, is uh, these are the free trade with the the, the REC in Africa, uh, the new partnership, and the third is the dialogue politic as all with uh, all the countries in Africa in, in the summits. Uh, and you have another, another, another framework is with uh, the, disons, for the Cotonou, the post-Cotonou uh, uh, agreement. So I think that to, to, consolidate, to consolidate the relation between uh, Africa and Europe in a vision to continent to continent, we have to, to uh, the African country as, uh, as well as uh, the European countries and the uh, EU have to uh, rationalize this, uh, this, this uh, framework of cooperation, rationalize in, in the vision, common vision and in the, uh, the use of uh, the, dis the disponibility of resources and uh, to have a cap to, uh, to develop people, relation people to people and enterprise to enterprise because in the, in the, in, 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 in the international relation now, we can't establish a, 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 a framework uh, to develop to supplement to, to develop relation between administration, we have to take in account 
the role that private sector and non-governmental actors have to, to, to play in this, uh, in this vision of cooperation. Thank you so much. Latifa, do you have something you would like to add to that? Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Yes. I, I would uh, just to add that uh, European Union is the uh, first uh, economic partner uh, of Morocco uh, until now. Uh, more than 16% of our trade is with European Union. Uh, European Union is uh, first investor in Morocco now, but Morocco has chosen uh, to, uh, to, to diversify its partners. Uh, uh, more than uh, 20 years uh, uh, ago, Morocco is uh, setting up uh, other uh, uh, strategic par partnership with other country and region in the world, uh, with America, with uh, some Asian countries, and uh, with UK uh, recently uh, after the Brexit and Africa. Uh, and the, the strategy of Morocco is to diversify its partner and uh, to work closely with uh, all these uh, partners. Uh, concerning the uh, question about uh, if uh, our strategy uh, and approach of sort with Africa is a uh, um, rea reality or still at the level of uh, uh, the perception, uh, I, I think that our webinar now shows that this, it is a reality. Our uh, strategy for Africa is a reality. We, we, uh, our trade uh, and our investment with Africa uh, grow and are growing uh, more and more. Uh, uh, Morocco is now uh, investors in African countries, uh, 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 and uh, 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 Moroccan companies uh, are becoming uh, uh, African uh, African uh, companies. Uh, are uh, establishing uh, uh, their uh, uh, production in Africa. So I, we can, uh, can show uh, that uh, our uh, uh, approach and our strategy, South, uh, South, uh, South cooperation is uh, a reality. Uh, I want to ju just uh, to add one, uh, one uh, idea, Chris, uh, if uh, we have uh, time. I, uh, I, I believe that uh, uh, the, the, the first uh, challenge for Africa now is execution. Uh, we have uh, agreements, we have a, a, a free uh, trade area, we have uh, many projects, but uh, we need the countries, uh, uh, regional organization need more and more efforts to execute uh, rapidly all our strategy uh, to, uh, to to size uh, opportunities that uh, that uh, Africa uh, present today. Thank you. Thank you for that very. Um... Good reminder that it's all it's it's beyond plans. It's it's about uh, implementation, and uh, indeed, um, it's a, been a tremendously interesting um, uh, presentations and and discussion we've had here. I really appreciate our, our, our presenters, uh, Latifa Larabi, and our discussant Anna for joining us today to help open up this topic to give us give the LSE audience and our shared audience a vision of what is going on, the, the dynamism that, that indeed is, is taking place. And uh, I look forward to working with our colleagues at, at the Center for the New South uh, on future such uh, ventures. Uh, and uh, I wish everyone uh, a, a very uh, wonderful rest of the evening and uh, for our friend in Singapore, a very, uh, <laughs> a night, a <laughs> good night as it were. And, uh, Thank you again, audience, for joining us. Thank you for, for this day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.